Right, good evening. It's uh, six o'clock here in Western Australia and nine o'clock in uh, Sydney and Melbourne. Um, a very warm welcome to, I hope it's warm where you are, it's been a really warm day here in Perth, uh, but a warm welcome here to the Property and Rental Market Update uh, educational webinar uh, for property investors and potential uh, property investors, people looking to um, get into the investment space through through residential property. So yeah, very good evening to you. Uh, a little bit of a run sheet tonight. So uh, my name is Garth Davis and I am the CEO and founder of Property Pahas. Uh, we'll tell you a little bit about what we do in a moment. Um, I'm one of your three property uh, presenters this evening. Uh, we're also going to be joined by Samara Bedwell from Chief Managing Director of Mackwell Property Management in Brisbane. Um, a real guru in her space, as well as uh, Jamie Horner from uh, Empire Property Management in Perth, also a director of that business, um, also an expert in the field. And uh, yeah, just uh, both of those people are full of knowledge and uh, a lot to learn from them. So uh, tonight's run sheet, so there'll be, I'm going to present for about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, then we'll go over to Samara from Brisbane and then back to Jamie for, for Perth update on the rental market here. And um, if uh, please at any stage, just uh, type some questions in. There should be a bar where you can type in where it says Q and A. Um, there should be an opportunity there for you to write any questions. Uh, I do encourage you to, to write your questions. Uh, you've got some really experienced and knowledgeable pe people on the webinar tonight. So we, we look forward to answering your questions and giving you some education. There's absolutely no sales going to be happening here tonight. So relax and uh, just enjoy the information. All right, let's see. All right, we'll just start off a uh, bit of a disclaimer. So sorry, we're a bit rusty. Uh, we haven't run a, one of these for about six months. So um, you've got to get the mouse moving and uh, hopefully the, we're coming across nice and loud and clear and uh, you can hear us. Uh, there will be a recording of this webinar, which I'll be sharing this evening. So if you missed anything or you'd like to look at the slides again, we will be sharing that this evening. Uh, there's just a disclaimer, basically importantly saying that the information is general in nature. It's not specific to any one of you. It's just for education purposes this evening. All right, so what does Property Powerhouse do? So Property Powerhouse, our mission statement is by providing education, support and experience, Property Powerhouse enables mum and dad investors to buy quality properties all around Australia building up their wealth, enabling them to retire debt-free on their own home and create multiple passive rental income streams. Now, that might sound relatively simple, but uh, the Australian Bureau of Statistics states that only one out of every 10 property investor goes on to buy a second property and uh, the third, a third property or fourth property, the numbers really go down to small percentages. So what that really tells us is that uh, people do... Uh, want to invest in property, but um, they find it very challenging. And uh, often that first property that they buy, they buy in the, in the wrong city at the wrong time, wrong type of dwelling. It's not a good rental type of property. Um, it doesn't give them what they wanted. They bought with emotion as opposed to buying with, with, their, with their heads. So um, yeah, our job is to try and help coach, direct you, hold our hands, and we take you through the process. Right, so what's been happening in the market? So since we had our last webinar, which was back in April, there's been a lot of things going on. And that's why we're really excited to speak to you tonight about what's been happening. And it's an exciting time because the market is very, there's a lot of movement. And for us that know what's going on, we're watching it very closely. We're very intrigued at how the market's responding to different things. So as we know, we've had seven consecutive interest rate uh, increases um, since the beginning of the year. And our latest one was on Melbourne Cup Day, as we know. Fortunately, a slow down to a 0.25%, which I think was a, a very good thing to do. It's sending the message not to scare people. It, um, it's telling them that, you know, we still got an inflation problem, um, but um, that, you know, we, we hopefully getting right to the end of that cycle. Um, you know, whether that's one more or two or three more, don't know, but we, we're getting close to the top now. So, um, but that's made a big difference. And for any of us that were looking to purchase a property before the interest rates um, started going up, 
you would have noticed that your purchasing capacity has really been compromised and shrunk because the serviceability through the banks. So the environment is different um, to where we were seven months ago. Obviously, the rates, you know, from 2%, now we're, you know, over 5% for investors. So it does make a big difference, particularly if you've got multiple properties in your portfolio. So it's important to really have a close relationship with a good finance broker that you know, like, and trust to understand, number one, your current finances, and are you working most efficiently in your current setup? Do you have the best loan? Do you have the best rate that you can with the bells and whistles that you may need or may not need? So I uh, highly encourage you. Finance brokers are very, very important and will help you a lot. What also has been happening now is uh, with, with the COVID, um, a little bit more under control, international migration, interstate migration, um, international migration coming through for skilled work migration. And don't we need it? We've, uh, as long as it's controlled and, you know, the, the numbers are not, uh, they don't just open the floodgates, which they're not doing. They, they bring in the skilled workers that they need, but we've been desperate for them. And I'm sure all of us know in the industries, whether you're driving, doing a drive through to get a coffee or a restaurant or in your workplace, you know that there's been a real shortage of labor. Um, here in Western Australia, where I'm based, the mines have really been sucking people up um, through all industries. And, um, you know, they've been sucked up and leaving a void. Uh, so we've had labor shortages and, um, you know, in some cases businesses have to close because they can't get labor. So really interesting there. Next point is decreasing rental supply. So what do I mean by that? So what it means is there's been some investors that have um, had a good run um, out of Sydney and Melbourne particularly and out of Brisbane and have decided right now is the time to offload properties and to sell them and take the gain. Um, not saying that's right or wrong, but that obviously suited them at that point in time. But what, what has actually been the fallout of that is that that property was owned by an investor. It was rented out by a tenant. And now what's happened when they sell that property, it's been primarily been bought by owner occupiers. So what it means is it doesn't go back into the rental pool. So owner occupiers have been very active in the market. And as the interest rates have moved, the, the, the investors have probably decided, in, in by and large, they, they're going to sit and wait until it, it stabilizes. But it's reduced the number of rental properties uh, quite significantly. And we're going to hear from Jamie and Samar, what does, you know, they do that every single day. They can tell you about their own rental books, how many people have sold, why they've sold, and did those properties come back in the pool or did they get on sold to an iron occupier? Increasing property demand, again, um, so people are, are still, as people are migrating or moving interstate, they're, they're needing to rent or they're needing to buy. So uh, there's massive demand. And we'll see in certain states, and again, that's our, in certain cities, that's our job as a research uh, property business, is to work out where that demand is massive and the supply is tight. And a lot of our, our research has been based around three capital cities of Perth, Brisbane, and Adelaide. They've had very, very strong demand, very tight supply, very strong rental yields, um, and they've been ticking a lot of boxes. And we'll talk that through now. Also, the big, the big thing that's been happening, obviously, is this inflation, this 8% inflation. Um, it's been a bit of a runaway. It's got uh, the Reserve Bank very nervous and edgy. Um, we, we're hoping that they've managed to contain it without going overboard. You know, we've had the 0.5% um, the 0.5 movements, um, base point movements up until last month, which was 0.25. Now you compare that to what's been happening in America. They've had 0.75s, New Zealand 0.75s in the UK. So, you know, those people's mortgages have really skyrocketed and, uh, you know, uh, probably going to drive those countries into a recession where I, I think they've met, seem to have managed it much better here in Australia. So those are some of the things that's been going on. So it's been a dynamic environment. It hasn't, prior to that, we know the interest rates stayed stable for almost two years, not a movement. And now we've had these seven in a row. So let's see what that actually, what that means and how that's played out. Just going to move to the next slide. Okay, so importantly, let's, let's see what's happening in this residential real estate in Australia. We know Australians, as we do, we love real estate. We love residential property. 
So let's have a look on the left-hand side here. We can see where the wealth of the country is actually sitting, all right? So at the top there, we can see we have $9.5 trillion in residential real estate, which if we come to the right, we can see that is made up of uh, 10.8 million dwellings. Okay, so that, you know, that'll be, that could be houses, apartments, townhouses, the works. A, a, a third of that value is in superannuation. Less than that is in the stocks and shares. And you can see where commercial is down by 1.3. The important thing to show you here, though, is that you can see where Australians like to park and invest their money. But the important thing here is you can see that the mortgages outstanding are only 2.1 trillion. Now, it sounds a big number, but when you run the maths and what we call a loan to value ratio, which means there's the value of the loans versus the value of the properties, all right? you can see that the loan to value ratio is only 22.1%. So, you know, the, the, what that means is the borrowings against real estate are actually really, really low, which is fantastic because it reduces the risk of a major trigger in the residential market. So if something happens, another big COVID or there's a war or something, what it means is that people, there's only, <clears throat> it's only 20% of, of loans out there. The other 80% is 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 equity or fully owned property so um it's a really good uh place to invest it's a low risk we haven't got ratios across the country at 50 percent or 80 percent so what it's telling us there is that there's actually only 20 percent of properties are mortgaged the other 80 percent or or 78 percent is is unencumbered and no debt on it so um that's very reassuring to know um, especially from a macro level where so much uh, wealth is invested in the real estate. Sorry, a little bit out of practice, as I said. <laughs> All right, let's have a look. So Reserve Bank have lifted the current rate is at 2.85. Now that's what we call the cash rate. That's what the Reserve Bank use as their monetary uh, percentage. Obviously the banks, they lend, lend money to the banks and the banks operating uh, sometimes at two or two and a half percent higher, depending on the loan, depending if it's for principal and interest, um, investor, owner, occupier, whatever. But it's the graph on the right that I wanted to show you. And you can see when you follow it to the end, 2.85, this graph is uh, created by, came through CoreLogic, but from Reserve Bank of Australia. You'll actually see a 2.85 now where we are. That, although we have felt the sudden impact of these um, continuous increases, it actually is your sort of long-term medium. As we can look across, you can see we're not sort of, um, uh, you know, we're not high above where we would be over what we would call a trend line. So we're trending at the moment on par with a medium to long-term sort of average. Um, obviously, it came down very, very quickly during COVID to emergency levels, but they brought it back up and uh, they've got, they've been trying to rein in, in the in inflation. But I think it's quite graphic just having a look at what's going on, all the little movements, how they adjust um, to, to try and um, move the, uh, the, the economy and the industries. So let's have a look at interest rates. So again, I'm not licensed to advise you on finance, but let's have a look uh, at general information here around interest rates. So we're assuming that we're going for an investor loan because this is what we're talking about investors here. We're assuming an 80% loan to value ratio which is your standard borrowing. So what that means is um, we're going to buy a property, let's say it's in Brisbane. We talk to the broker. The, the, the bank is going to lend us 80% against the value of that asset. All right. So, and we have to find the other 20% plus settlement costs, about 5%, so about 25%. That's either coming from uh, cash or normally equity in your own home. So your own home's gone up in value. You talk to the broker and there's an opportunity for you to buy an investment property using the equity in your property, right? It could be, I'm using for this assumption, an interest only loan, as opposed to principal and interest. Uh, the variable rates are around about 5.59%, right? So um, you'll be cheap on your own occupied, but for an investor, we pay, uh, Unfortunately, investors pay a bit of a premium through the banks, currently at 5.59%. Um, if you were looking at fixed, well, we can see the fixed rate for two years, 6.14, so that's higher, and a three-year fixed at 5.94. So the banks are maneuvering these things 
uh, all the time. So variable rates are generally move every time the Reserve Bank moves up or down, they move. And the fixed rates are looking at the longer term of where they see it going. So we can see like in three years time, the, the banks who are, who are much smarter than you know we are can see that it's not going to be a lot higher than where we are now. So they, they probably think it may go up another one or two um, in the short term, but over a three-year period, we see it that it's, uh, it's, it's probably going to max out the 5.94, around about 6% retail. So it's important to understand, excuse me, the numbers, because that very much affects, it's your biggest cost, which is the, your, your, your interest on your mortgage as an investment property. Obviously, your income is, the, is from the rent, but this is your biggest outgoing, right? This is just a, uh, from Core Logic, just to show you in principle, about 70% of the finance should be owner occupier, about 30% 30 investor. So what it just tells us is where there may be some opportunity. So what it tells us here, like in WA, instead of being at 30%, the investors, uh, there's a little bit less investor activity going on, which is good because there's slightly less competitors for you in that market. We can see um, Queensland's um, had a lot of investor activity there uh, compared to some of the others. So it just, it's just good to know where um, the sort of where the, the lending is per state. Uh, and Australia across the board is about 33% in favour of investor loans versus the owner occupier. Okay, so I'm just going to move that out of my way so we can see here. Now, the, the our, our rental property manager gurus, Samara and Jamie, are going to tell us more about this in depth tonight. But I just wanted again to show you the graph of what's happened to rentals. So we, we've seen in our own backyards certain cities where the values have gone up really well. And we maybe have seen values coming back in the last six months. But look what's going on in the rental space. Uh, rents have gone up 10%, and that's uh, across on a national basis. These other cities where they've gone even higher, we can see. Um, over here, Adelaide, 13%, Brisbane, 13%, Perth, 9.6%. Um, so there's been a massive increase. So if you've been a renter, you'll know all about it. Um, there's been less supplies, more demand. And the, unfortunately, the reality is, is that if you want the property, you've got to, you've got to pay more. Um, so as an investor, we've got to be looking at that and saying, right, income is increasing. Uh, that's a good sign. So rents are not dropping. Uh, our income is increasing uh, from from the uh, from the rent. So we know uh, the mortgages are going up, the interest on the mortgage is going up, but so is the uh, the rent amounts. Right. This just quickly here is also from um, uh, a graph to have a look at. So the dark blue colours are the navy is house prices, and the lighter blue is in units or apartments. And again, pretty much what you expect. Uh, we can see Canberra's performed particularly well there in the housing space. But what we want to check is affordability. So we can see affordability here around Brisbane, affordability around Adelaide, and affordability around Perth. And in all cases, you'll see that the house prices, uh, medium price is much higher than, um, than the, the unit. So it's just good to see what's going on and, and compare the cities one on one to next to each other. The residential vacancy rates, again, I'll leave this to the guru, but it's good to see to the guru's note. A normal market should be around about a 3% vacancy, 3%, right? So 97% occupied, 3% investment properties on the market and, and advertised. As you can see here, the look at these numbers here. So the black one is Perth 0.4, Adelaide 0.4. Um, so it's scary. There's, there's a rental crisis in the country. Okay, and we can see that. Look at Darwin. These should be in a, in a state of equilibrium at about 3%. Look what they're all doing, all right? So massive, massive shortage. Um, demand is strong. Um, asking rents, again, what we can see here across the different, uh, as we would expect, Sydney, the most expensive. Melbourne is, uh, Melbourne and, and Perth performing well there across uh, the houses. And the same trend lines across for, uh, the problems again in units again it's across the board where we've seen um, uh, a shortage of rentals uh, massive demand and um, the, the asking rents going up so um, just to give you that's more of a generic background and we'll be diving into the Brisbane and, and, and Perth markets uh, shortly all right and these are the gross yields so um, 
what these are, this is like a rental yield, we call it a rental yield. So um, we divide the, so if you were going to get uh, a property is worth $500,000 and you're getting $500 a week in rent, that would be a 5.2%. So um, it could just tell you that uh, it helps you compare the, uh, the rental yields per capital city. And generally, uh, the, the bigger cities of Melbourne and Sydney, there you can see. So your interest rates at five point, what did we said, five point two percent, and your gross yields are only two point eight, two point five. And that's why we haven't been really recommending Melbourne and Sydney at the moment because the cash shortfall per week is massive. All right, the rent coming in is versus what you're paying in the mortgages is massive. So we see much better opportunities out of uh, the Perth, Adelaide, and the Brisbane markets, but. So that's a general uh, run through of what's happening in the market. I'm going to now ask Samora to uh, to put on her camera and I'm going to uh, unmute herself and um, she's going to take the next section. Uh, I'm just going to give her a bit of an introduction. So there's, uh, there's Samora and a little bit of an introduction to Samora. So Samora Bedwell is the Managing Director of Macwell Property Management in Brisbane. I've known and worked with Samora for over 18 years. She's for any of our clients that are on tonight that have properties in Southeast Queensland, you know that um, we, we're very big advocates for Samara. We completely two standalone businesses. There's no referral fees. There's nothing. We just recommend them because they're brilliant. Uh, Samara is the Managing Director of Macro Property Management and has 20 years experience in the industry. During her career, she has won many national and state industry awards. Highly regarded as an industry expert in Queensland, Samara has written several key articles for industry publications and newspapers and contracts to the Real Estate Institute of Queensland as a trainer and consultant. She is known for exceeding expectations in customer service and believes in employing staff with a positive, hardworking attitude. Good evening, Samara. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for your rundown. It has been a long time since we've done one of these, hasn't it? Yeah, sure. Uh, well overdue now. It's been a big, big year. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, so, yeah, there's been lots happening. Um, probably not enough time to actually talk you through what has happened um, over the last couple of years, particularly. Um, we as real estate agents, I guess, had a, a here in Queensland, had a really good two-year period with uh, the Brisbane housing market going off like a frog in a sock. Um, obviously, the market has started to to slow in terms of that resale of stock now with um, you know listings being quite thin on the ground. But Gav, I'll get you just to, to flick over to my, my next slide and I'll start to crunch down on some information for you because that's what you're all here for. So basically um, property values from the onset of COVID-19 um, climbed 38.1% um, since March 2020. And rents since that time did climb by 23%. So that's huge here in Queensland because really if we think about it, over the last 10 years, the Queensland market just slowly, you know, tethered along. We, we didn't go backwards, but, you know, our investors just sort of poked along and we had a very steady market and we've made, made up for it in the last two years. Um, for the Greater Brisbane, the median weekly rent value, um, basically at the end of August, across all, all dwellings, was at around $530 week, uh, $30 per week. Um, indexing this medium by historic growth in rents, weekly values across the Greater Brisbane have increased a record 13.3% from around 468 in August last year. So we're seeing huge record increases um, that we've not seen before. And I've got 21 years in this market. Um, so my mind has been constantly blown this last two years and I'm trying to catch up. And I honestly say that to all of you here. Um, we, we are constantly reviewing uh, markets and, and basically not being able to say historically this is what happens because we've not seen this in history before. Um, the monthly rental vacancy rates, as Garth had sort of alluded to before, is incredible. Um, we've been basically sitting at about that 1%. We did have a record of 0.9% uh, um, earlier this year, but um, it's less than our half the five-year average, which is usually about that 2.8 to 3%. So it's it's just a ridiculously tight rental space. 
Um, and yes, you've probably heard in um, the media that we do have a rental crisis. Um, I've been heading to a lot of um, housing summits where we're bringing social housing and, and talking about bringing private and social housing together. Um, sadly, there's not a, a great deal of answers coming through yet as to how we're going to fix the problem that we have. Um, but at least it is a hot topic of, of conversation and we're hopefully going to be moving forward with something um, in the next few years, but there is no short-term solutions right now. So do we need investors? Yes, we do. Um, so if anybody is looking to invest, Queensland may well be the place for you. Um, 8,208 advertised rental properties across Brisbane were marketed in the 28 days to September. That is actually 48.2% lower than the previous five-year average. So this is what I'm talking about in terms of low limited availability of rental stock. Now, I'm going to be completely uh, transparent with you guys. You will see if you are avid a current affair watchers, people um, crying, and it's not just a current affairs, don't get me wrong, but there are people on these shows crying, I have applied for 50, 60 rental properties um, and I'm being rejected. There, what I have done is I've sat down with my team because our, our business rents property on the Gold Coast, on the western suburbs of Brisbane, northern suburbs of Brisbane, right across the southeast corner of, of um, Brisbane and the Gold Coast. And so what we've been doing is we've been tracking what's going on with um, the rental shortage. And so when we will list a property for rent, which is very rare, we, we don't get a lot come up for rent at the moment, we will instantly get approximately 60 to 65 inquiries within the first 24 hours. Now from that 65 inquiries, we might get 30 to 32 people inspect or register to inspect that property. Um, at the inspection, we will usually get roughly 20 to 25 people actually turn up. From there, we'll get about 11 applications. So you can start to see the numbers dwindle already. And that might be because they've found something in the meantime. They don't bother turning up. They've been called into work, sick kids, whatever it might be. So this is the reasons why things dwindle. From the applications, though, we will only therefore get approximately 11 applications. And out of those 11 applications, there will only be, honestly, four applications that I would genuinely present to our landlord clients that would be suitable. And I'm going to talk to you and delve into that a little bit later. So that's four really good candidates, though, and we still don't have enough houses for those four people. So there is a shortage. There's no doubt about it. But it is not to the point where we can be charging $1,000 for a $600 a week rental, if that makes sense. So we'll talk about that shortly. Garth, if I can get you just to skip over to the next slide for me. So um, this graph here, I have taken it from CoreLogic, and this is what we're talking, I'm going to talk to you about in regards to portion of income requ required to service new rents. Now, for as long as I can remember being in this industry, we've always looked at serviceability. Now, as an investor, when I purchased my own investment properties, I've always made sure I've got the serviceability to afford the loan. Um, so we also do that for our clients to make sure that the tenants have the serviceability. And we've always based that based um, that the tenants' rent should be no more than roughly 25 to 30% um, of their, their household income. Now, with the rising rental costs, but yet the incomes aren't rising in, um, in line with that, we're finding that 30% of the income isn't quite enough. And so household budgets are getting quite tight. So uh, this graph does show that right now they're at about 29.3% of household incomes are being spent on rents. Um, we are finding more often than not people are sitting at about the 40%, which doesn't give our investors a lot of wriggle room should the market even increase further, which is potentially on the cards should more and more rental properties pull out of the rental pool. 
which could actually happen. So we've got to be smarter. We look at future proofing um, for our investors. So we are always looking for that more affordability in the applications that we're processing to ensure we've got that wriggle room there as well. I'll get you to jump through to the next slide for me, Garth. So on this slide, I've got a couple of graphs for you. Um, so you can see here, I spoke earlier about that uh, record 13.3% um, increase, um, that the, the gap in regards to the medium weekly rent increase. So it was it was 468 per week. It is now a medium of 530. So you can see, as I said, over the last 10 years, we just sort of tetted along for a period of time. Um, and then we've just had this massive, massive spike. Um, and so we've made very, very good. Um, but on the other slide, so as you can see that one, we're going up. On the other slide, you're seeing our vacancy rates have, have come down so dramatically. So rents are going up, vacancy rates are coming down. So that's fantastic for investors. Not so good if you're uh, looking for a rental property um, as a tenant, um, but if we can get some more rental properties out there, we might even it out a little bit. Over to our next slides, if that's all right, Gar. So what I've got here is a little bit of an indication of what may have happened in regards to, and, and Garth, you alluded to this earlier as well, about people selling out and properties not um, necessarily coming back into the rental pool. So in 2021, um, when property prices hit a spike, um, a lot of investors that have held their properties for over 10 years said, oh, this is a really good market, and they decided to sell. So a lot of the properties sold, a lot of, of those homes were sold to non-investors. They were sold to first-time um, buyers that weren't necessarily interstate. There was a lot of media around interstate buyers, but we did our own research here and found that literally one in seven were, were interstate buyers. So it was traditionally what we were finding where they were local buyers, but first time buyers or intergenerational buyers. So they um, they were being bought here, but not to investors and weren't re-entering the, the rental pool. So you can see there with that spike that has been circled, that, that that was a big surge of property that left that rental pool, which therefore created that shortage in rental supply and put, helped attributed to push those rental prices up as well. Okay, so if you would like to move along to the next slide. So I've got a recent case study and this is very recent, this was literally last week. So we've got a property, had a property uh, in Melbourne Street in Polara, which is our western suburbs. So that is the actual photo, front photo of the property that we used for marketing. It's a four bedroom, two bathroom, two car, standard finishings, nothing flash, built as an investment property, built in 2020. Um, it is a desirable area. There is still um, a little bit of development going on in the area. Um, the rental return, return achieved in 2020 was $460 a week. Um, we still had plenty of applications then. Um, the rental return we achieved just recently was $555 per week. So that's a 20.6% increase over the two year period. So that owner was quite stoked. Um, and this is what we're seeing overall. I've got actually dozens of these cases, but I just wanted to share with you what we've seen um, in, you know, the, the last particularly eight months in terms of how quickly the rents have increased and what we're seeing here on the ground. So if you'd like to go to our next slide, yeah. Um, so also what you may have heard of in Queensland um, that's been rolling out is our Queensland rental reforms um, that have put fear into some, but I want you to know that it is not all doom and gloom. Um, if you have got an investment property and you're listening tonight, um, as long as you've got a, a serious property management professional that can guide you through and navigate these waters, you will be fine. Um, because a lot of the reforms um, that were initially proposed have been shut down. Um, the REIQ, which I consult to and contract with, fought very, very hard. And a lot of the, the rat bag stuff 
was absolutely um, removed. And when we read through it, a lot of it does sort of come into play where it was really, I guess, common sense. And it really comes down to making sure you've got someone that can apply the legislation and the knowledge correctly. So just to break it down quickly for you, what is already in place and come into play during um, an amendment through the COVID period was the domestic and family violence amendments, which means that anyone suffering a, a domestic and family violence act uh, can exit a tenancy um, a lot more simply than they once could. Um, there is an emergency maintenance process now um, in terms of uh, spend limit um, is being raised for four weeks of rent that a tenant can spend. So we are now navigating through that, making sure that um, landlords and agents communicate and have the right to spend up to that amount, putting down preferred tradespeople. Um, there's now a section with repair orders, so tenants can actually apply for repair orders. So it's very, very important, more so now, that um, owners are very, very responsive with maintenance. Um, things that we tend to live with as owners um, in our own properties may not necessarily be something that tenants will put up with and can take very stringent action. So this is one that's a bit of a pain in the backside, but we just need to take action a little bit more quickly and pet approvals. So um, we must act quickly and promptly on pet approvals and must have very reasonable and, and um, just grounds for declining pets. Um, and then moving forward into 2023, we'll see the minimum housing standards roll out. The key six key areas of those that, are that the houses must be structurally sound, which would be fair and reasonable, must be in good repair, free from vermin, damp and mould, which is an actual fairly big issue in the tropics. Um, window coverings, locks and privacy. Um, they must have adequate drainage, um, private bathrooms and toilets and functioning cooking and laundry fixtures, which um, typically with any of the newer stock, you're not gonna have any of these issues, but if you typically tend to, to invest in older properties and some of the older Queensland style properties may have some issues with some of these minimum housing standards as we roll out. So we will be working closely with some of our investors with some of this older stuff as we move into 2023 and that is just around the corner. So Garth, I'll get you just to flick on to the next uh, slide. What are our tenants looking for? Really, um, what we have found is that our tenants really want our landlords and us as agents just to be responsive. Um, people are really wanting to be moving away from the AI, that automated templated momentum that really seemed to come about so they want to talk to us um, and they just want a response. Um, they do want properties that are well presented. Um, everyone wants to make it feel like home and they just want something that's fairly priced. They just don't want to be gouged. They feel like they're getting gouged everywhere and I just understand that as well. The main things that people are seeking when they contact us is if they want air conditioning, it is Queensland. They want security. Security is a huge thing these days. Um, no one wants to wash dishes. They all want dishwashers, uh, remote garages and um, really good internet speed. We are finding that a lot of people are still working from home um, or are part time working from home. So a bit of job share from home and that. And a lot of people are still looking for flexible lease terms. So um, they are sort of wanting to be able to no negotiate a shorter term lease because they are looking to do something themselves, either buy or build. And um, the, the conditions with these legislations with periodic tenancies have created some issues. So they are looking for a few flexible lease terms. Because of these legislation changes that are coming into place, it really is a must that our landlords really do have landlord insurance. Um, it doesn't matter how good your property managers are. Um, you really must protect yourself and landlord insurance is just something we, we can't sleep with your tenants. Um, we can't sleep with you. So just protect yourself and get your landlord insurance. Make sure you've got a good tax professional and depreciation schedule in place because you really want to get the most benefit out of your property as you can. And always um, get an advanced property management team because at the end of the day, I've never seen so many changes come through our profession as I have in the last two 
years. And I can I really do believe that these changes are going to continue to happen and you need to be sure that you are well protected. Investing in property is a beautiful thing and it, it can uh, obviously bring so much benefit to your family and to your wealth and and um you you just need to make sure though that you've got the right people on your team um, and that you make considered decisions with the right people for that. So I know that I'm tooting my own trumpet because that's my industry, but I have not seen so many changes in such a short period of time. And I really think that uh, protection is going to be, be key moving forward. I'll get you to, to move on. Um, we are obviously very proud of who we are and what we do. We've got a gorgeous team. They are only very small. We are only very small. We are very choosy with who we work with, um, but we do work with Garth. <laughs> so he's, he's one in a million because he does a great job. Um, we love to, um, you know, keep in contact with people like Jamie over in WA because she too does an amazing job. We've got some brilliant clients that we, we love to work with every day. And our tenants, I actually have to say, we've got a beautiful catalogue of tenants too. So I would love to talk to you guys further if there's anything that we can do for you and let you know about what's going on here in, in Brisbane and the Gold Coast. It's been an incredible journey and um, it's it's just keeping on going. It's incredible. <laughs> no, well, that's brilliant. Thank you so much, Samara. Um, um, mindful of time, but there are two questions there. Um, I'm going to maybe get you to type the answer, and I think you can see the questions on the dashboard tomorrow. So one was, do you, you this is from Ian, thank you, Ian, um, and you are a property manager for one of Ian's properties, actually, I think in Pallara. Do you advise increasing rent out of cycle at times like these? So I'm going to get you to type the answer, just being mindful of time. And there's a second question in there. Hi, uh, this is from Sandrine. Thanks, Sandrine, for your question. Hi, part of Queensland property reform also includes the taxation for owner non-residents in Australia, isn't it? So I don't know. That's probably a foreign tax, uh, which is across all states. Uh, but I'll let you, um, Samara, are you able to type answers for those two? No, I can't seem to access the, okay. the you'd have to give me. Okay. Well, Ian and Sandrine, we will. I will take a copy of your questions. We will get them answered. Um, but just mindful of keeping this uh, uh, done. Uh, Mr. First off, the Prezo is a replay available. Absolutely, there's a recording for the whole presentation tonight. And Samara, you're a superstar, and uh, absolutely, um, you know, it starts from the right beginning. They quality control the applicants, the rents, renters, right from the word go. If you do your, like all of us, we do our jobs properly in the beginning, you've got a bloody good chance it's going to be a good result. But if you don't screen and vet and filter, uh, you just grab the first guy off the street, well then, you know, you've got to expect to have uh, trouble from that. All right, so we now are going to move to our third and final speaker. So, um, Jamie, if you want to just unmute yourself, um, I'm going to introduce Jamie. So, Jamie Horner is Director of Empire Property Management. There's a few of you on here tonight that have her as your property manager or as your upcoming property manager. I know that uh, we've got one of the clients on here tonight that's uh, settling in the next month and uh, and Jamie will be property managing. Um, so Jamie's question is, how do you become a long-term successful investor that is ready for a life of relaxation? Well, as she quite rightly says, it's all about your team. Jamie has helped more than 1,500 owners for more than 20 years acquire, build, and hold their own property empire through investor-focused property and strata management strategies. Uh, with a master's in property, wow, so you're very intelligent, my girl. Bachelor of <laughs> Commerce and a diploma in management of uh, real estate, Jamie holds a wealth of knowledge and manages the Raywa Property Management Team of the Year. The Raywa Property Management Team of the Year at Empire, wow, very good. Um, you're a superstar, Jamie. Uh, please share us uh, your thoughts on where the market is. Thank you. Thank you, Samara. Thank you, Garth. Um, anyone that knows me knows I can talk, so I'm going to get straight into it. Um, thank you, Garth, very much for that nice um, entry. But I will always say, guys, people ask me why property. I mean, no one was born loving property. I must admit my kids talk about Jeff Bezos and, and Elon Musk and, and everyone and, and, and talk about, you know, their future and 
I suppose, guys, the reason I love property is, and I probably love it even more now, is that when my parents migrated here about three years before I was born, they migrated here with about $100. And we were really, really lucky that my parents just bought properties in the 80s. Um, extremely lucky. You know, to them, a seventeen dollars or a $32,000 mortgage was horrendous, huge compared to how much they paid. But something that I value more than anything now, especially as Samara talked about the number of people we have that are in homelessness or in crisis is, is just what my parents were able to do. Um, gosh, crypto just has had the worst um, feedback probably in the last day. I don't know anything much about crypto, but I've had everyone tell me about those markets. And I think something that's nice about property is even if we think about our grandparents um, the wealth or most of the wealth that they accumulated was through property. So what I do see now is, is I see a lot of grandparents and parents just able to buy their kids a home um, just so that they've got that first home to rent in with their mates while they're going to uni. It's just all those little things that allows us to do. I hope that my three boys finally leave my house one day, but I also know that it's probably through the property journey that I'll be able to help them. So guys, my love is, of property is purely for the fact of what it's done for my family, but also too, I do look at a lot of the owners that we manage for that even through Garth have bought one or two properties. And even though some of them may have sold, they've sold because a lot of them have told me I've been able to buy my son a home for him to live in through uni or, you know, we've been able to do this or that. I've had um, grandparents that have sold just to help out with school fees. So I think sometimes the return and all that sort of stuff is great on property, but it just allows us to make life decisions. So that's why I love it. Garth, you know I like to chat and I can see that there's 13 minutes left. So next slide, please. Okay, guys, we did actually do this some time ago. So I was really impressed to see what was happening. 2015 to 2017 was a horrible time in WA for a lot of my owners. Great time for my tenants, rents were going backwards, but we pretty much had declining rents. We all know, we've all talked about supply and demand. 2018-2019, demand uh, supply just slowed. So supply slowed because those rents were going backwards and that return wasn't there. And when the supply dwindled, it just continued to dwindle. So from 2018 to date, so 2018 to 2022, supply has continued to pitter off in WA. So um, our bonds administrator holds all bonds in WA and we are at a historic low for the number of bonds lodged. We're at 16,500 less than we were a year ago. So we already have 16,500 less properties available for rent just in WA. We were supposed to have an increase in March. So that's when the market really turned and so COVID hit. So what happened was, is that everything that was supposed to happen in March, 2022, all the way to September, 2022, WA was one of those wonderful states that rent got capped. And I say wonderful in my sarcastic mode um, for 12 months. So the, the, that increase that our owners were waiting for in 2020, COVID hit. And what it's meant is, is that 2020 to 2022 has just been crazy. Two reasons, supply continues to be low, but now demand has gone through the roof. So in 2022 alone, so again, we know that from 2020 to 2021, rents increased 14 to 17%. If you're wondering about the two figures, it's because our houses always increase better than apartments do. Villas, townhouses do very, very well as well, but apartments are sort of a bit of a different market in WA. We don't tend to necessarily come to WA to embrace the apartment, but our migration is changing that. We all love a house in WA. So even in the last two quarters in WA, rent has increased by 10%. Talking sales figures, I haven't put them on the screen and while Gas moving over to the next slide, 
In WA, we did increase 24.5% in sale price growth. And we are the only state that has bucked the trend over the last few quarters and that we've continued to have small amounts of growth still. But that's because we didn't do the large 30 37% that other people did. We've almost been doing it per style. So a little bit slow and staggered, a little bit delayed, but we're still growing along. So um, I think Samara talked about the fact that they've currently got about 8,000 properties um, available and that's a crisis. 8,000 is normal in Perth and we are down to 1,772 properties. So guys, I cannot tell you how scary 1,772 is. Um, vacancy rate 0.7%. That's not even a true factor to tell you the truth. It's almost 0.1%, 0.1%. Let's be honest, a lot of the properties I have, I don't, they don't even go to market. And 0.7% is purely because we're testing the market. So properties in Perth still sell in 17 days and they still actually rent in less than 11. Our vacancy rate is supposed to show us properties that are available for more than 14 days. And to tell you the truth, that 0.7% is us advertising properties that are maybe not available for three or four weeks, or we're all testing some high prices. One of the other things that you really, really need to know in Perth is even though we have this absolutely low supply of 1772, we seem to always just truck along at a nice rate. So we are still the most affordable state in WA. So when you look at rents 495 and 430, even though everyone's having, you know, a bit of a heart attack in WA, they are having a heart attack because they've got nowhere to live. And that is absolutely understandable. We do have homelessness issues. We are working with a lot of groups to try to support them. But even in WA, defence housing needs 72 properties. And you can see there that their chances are quite slim when you've got such a low pool of properties available. And then look at that rent amount, guys, 495 and 430. So we're still attracting other states to come and live here. Next slide, Garth, if that's okay. So guys, this is the Perth property market. Just like everyone else, we are beyond a crisis. Forget the crisis, we're in the crisis two years ago. Now we've got some scary things to think about. Migration. So like I said to you guys, supply has dwindled from 2015 to date. The problem that we've got in WA that has made our numbers drop even further is we've opened our borders. So we're currently processing 1,500 visa applications per week. Now, guys, let's hope that they're all families of four. So maybe we only need 500 properties a week. As you can see, 1,772 properties is not going to meet the visas that are coming in. However, it's a bit of a conundrum for our WA government. They need people in because we need the workers but they have nowhere to house them. So I've known builders that have flown a team of bricklayers over here for four days, paid them an arm and a leg to put up a house, let them sleep in tents and gone home. The number of builders that are trying to get leases at the moment just so that they can also get people to finish off properties is huge. But as you can see there, industry insiders predict anywhere from 20 to 80,000 interstate and overseas migrants will be fighting for over only 10,000 properties. If you actually look at Australia's migration numbers, we kindly reported that the 1 million backlog of visas is now down to 755,000. So yes, we cleared 255,000 visas, but our other problem in WA and also across Australia is, is that WA is affordable compared to a lot of the other states and it has a mining sector that pays quite well. But again, guys, another problem, 1,772 homes. So yes, rents are going up quite considerably, but we're not, again, in WA, they tend, I think it's a lot to do with my owners. I must admit, even though I tell them that the rent can go up $60 a week, they seem to go, oh, let's go 30. Um, I, I feel that a lot of our owners obviously feel the crisis as well. Um, but as you can see in WA, we've seemed to manage to continue a nice 10 to 15, 20%, and we're still very affordable. So next slide, Garth, if that's okay. 
Okay, guys, as you can see, vacancy rate, Perth rents, they're all trucking along nicely. Um, we almost plateaued a bit. Guys, if you want to know about the plateau, it's purely for the fact that most rents and leases are six or 12 months. When the moratorium ended, we all put our rents up because they'd been on hold for 12 months. And then we get that six month, 12 month cycle that continues to happen. But again, we opened our borders, we cleared those numbers and have a look at those figures going up again. I am all for us clearing those visas and getting people into WA. We need to build houses. We need, I mean, we've got amazing restaurants in Vic Park. We have the number one Uber Eats cafe strip in Australia. That's why I'm fat because I obviously work along here. But the other thing also is, guys, is we can't man our restaurants. Half of our most popular restaurants are closing because we can't get staff. Um, mining companies can't get staff. They are even you know, attracting property managers. Do you want a four day week, fly in, fly out, paying them almost double what we're paying them just to get all that mining work done. So what it means guys is visas coming in. And again, we, we've gone beyond crisis. We actually, we've got a lot of people that are coming here to work and they can't actually get a property. So next slide, Garth. Oh, oh here we go, other way. Okay, so some raw statistics for you guys. Last 10 times I've probably done this, I've always had anywhere from eight to 15 properties. I had two months in the last six months where I had zero properties for rent. So I've taken this from October where I actually had four properties for rent in October. So as you can see, four properties, 1,539 inquiries on four properties. We had 19 inspections scheduled and we had 372 tenants and 87 applications for four properties leased. I must admit, we're not leasing them as fast as we used to because we are now honestly just testing price. It's not because we can't lease them, but I must admit a $650 townhouse, we're trying at 700 at the moment. Because when you've got these sort of numbers and you've got you know, even Defence Force willing to pay 950 per property. We've got other companies willing to pay the rents that they're paying in Sydney, Melbourne. We are actually seeing some more decent price movements. But guys, again, scary. Scary if you are one of the 83 applicants that didn't actually get a to, didn't actually get that property. Next one over, Garth. So guys, what do people want in WA? We still love our wide open spaces. We still love a block and we still love the beach. We don't mind a commute. I will admit that most of the investors that we are having in WA are from the Eastern States. They've always been much quicker than WA investors at recognizing something. And most of our owners or investors are going, wow, I can be 25 minutes from the city, five minutes from the beach, still only pay $400 or $500,000 and get $600 a week in rent. They're looking at a lot of our suburbs along the coast and thinking, wow, we have this beautiful coastline. Okay, Garth, next slide over, nearly done. So guys, again, houses within 25 kilometers of the CBD, people absolutely love metro beachside houses. No properties stagnate. I was writing before that apartments stagnate, but nothing stagnates in Perth anymore. But houses and medium density is so hot. Of those 1,772 properties, half of them are apartments and the other half are houses and townhouses. And that's what people want. People want pet potential. I'm sorry whether owners like it or not. You know, large population of Australians have a pet quality education. We have an extreme labour shortage and is experiencing positive net migration. Perth is still number one, guys, the most affordable straight in Australia. And in record history, never happened before, WA has 1.5 jobs for every unemployed person. Even if every unemployed person wanted to work, we could not fill the jobs that are available in WA. And we are approving 1,500 visas a week for skilled migrants. Next one. People have said to me, but how about all the houses you're building? This is where they are at, guys. Most of our houses that were constructed during the, uh, or were contracted two years ago, this is where they're at. They're at roof height and we can't finish them. 
I actually personally hope that we finish these houses. But even if we finish these 2,000 houses, we need another 15,000 more. So guys, people say to me, but how about all those constructions? Well, construction is now down 37% in WA, purely for the fact that builders aren't taking on the jobs because they can't build them. So if you're worried about oh, all this supply that's coming, we have even more issues in trying to supply the houses as well. Next one, Garth. No. That's it, all done. Thanks guys, sorry, that was so super fast, but I think it gives you an idea of what's happening in Perth. Uh, that's beautiful. Well, thank you so much to Jamie and Samara, I'll just get you to take off uh, your video if you're still there and uh, maybe just keep your mics open guys. Um, so look, we've got some questions, but I'm also mindful that it's time and particularly for, for Eastern States uh, viewers. Uh, so thank you for coming along. So look, as you can see, it's actually a really exciting time in property. Listening to Samara and to Jamie, you can hear that if you actually, if you committed and you and you and you're looking to do something, it's an exciting time because rent equals income and income is up. But you need that good team of people around you. You need Jamie and you need Samara for your rentals, and you need to keep talking to them and getting advice. And, you know, as I've said to you, tonight's role is, is to educate you on what's happening in the market. It's an exciting time and it's important you put this good team around you. Um, I'll be reaching out to you all in the next day or so. And look, one of the very best places to start is to look at your finance. All right. So we're going to be encouraging you to talk to your finance broker. Just see if you've got your most efficient finance that you can for this point in time, whether it's your own home loan, your own home mortgage or an investment property. And ask the question, let's see if you've got some equity. If you've got some equity and you can get a loan, well, maybe that's when you and I can have the discussion to say, right, well, look, you've got the potential. Um, let's have a look at what you may want to do or may not want to do um, and what's the outcome you're trying to achieve. But um, I, I think it's a really exciting time. And uh, there's many years where the rents do nothing and the values do nothing. And at this time, um, I think it's all really exciting. So. Um, Samara and Jamie, uh, thank you so much. Is there anything you would, uh, out of you'd like to say just in closing? Um, uh, I'll start with you, Samara. Anything you'd like to just finish off he having heard from Jamie and maybe um, anything else? No, I'm, after hearing Jamie, I'm, I'm glad I'm not in W. I do love to visit WA, but um, when I hear your vacancy rates and, and that, like, we're, we're happy we're here in Queensland. I, you know, we've, we've been working hard, but it's, um, yeah, you guys really must be pushing it really tough over there. So we're, we're still, you know, we're doing great, really. <laughs> it can always be worse, couldn't it? And, and look, I know we don't have time, but I wanted to ask you an, a, an important question because I've obviously worked with you guys every day and in the space. Now, it's not always a joyish a joy ish position for a property manager. You, they are very much caught in this whole trauma of, let's say, a tenant, a, a landlord is selling a property. Where does this tenant go? So your property managers, um, they must have, a, it's, it's a difficult time for them. Because you're not just, oh, well, we didn't get this, so we're going to that. And they're dealing with real mums and dads with children and pets, and they get very emotionally involved. And it's it's not your call, not their call a lot of the time to say, yes, you can rent or no, you can't. So maybe um, Samara and then to Jamie. Samara, so are you very mindful with that with your team that the mental health and, and all, you know, they've got to go to sleep at night with a, with a clear mind. And they're obviously thinking about all these families that are battling and, and doing it tough. Yeah, Gav, I actually took my whole girls, like I don't do it often, but I actually took the girls today for pedicures, like half an hour. We were flat out, but at 11.30, I just looked at them and they were just exhausted. And I just said, come on, we've got 45 minutes. We're over there. We're getting, we're just going to go and have a foot massage and paint your toenails with Christmas red. That's what we're doing. We had a report come out earlier this year, Garth, that 70% of property managers have left the industry. And it was just based on... The, the devastation of the homelessness, the aggression from people not being able to get into houses and, and rents going up and people just were just pushing up against it. The legislations were changing. So, yeah, we, I'm very conscious of, you know, I've, I've been lucky. I've got some really good people that have stuck with us in the industry. 
Um, I always have said you've got to be a little nuts to be a property manager. Um, so, yeah, you've got to look after yourself and your team and because you're looking after your clients and your tenants, but you're working for your client. This is about their financial future. But if you don't look after the tenant too, your client's got nothing. You, you, so it's it's a big game. This being a property manager, there's so much more to than just collecting the rent and people, I think, forget that. Yeah. No, beautiful. And, and Jamie, are you you finding, um, tell us how you manage that as a director of your, your team. Um, look, Garth, and again, I sort of felt for our owners in 2013, 2016 in Perth, you know, they were looking at declining rents and their financial situations. And in and in this manner, we're also looking at it at the extreme end on the other side. You, you know, like I said to you, we have um, mining industries here that would pay my team double. Um, and the hardest thing is, is that... Um, I think as property managers, we forget that at times, yes, we look after our client, but what we are seeing at the moment is how many people are struggling and how that decision to put a, put the rent up or even sell that property, um, it puts so much stress on a person. And what we are finding as property managers, I suppose, is that whatever stress a tenant is having in their life, it seems to be currently taken out on us. Does that make sense? Even if it's the hot water system, even if it's something. So again, we spend a lot of time dealing with conflict, understanding that it's not about us. Um, homelessness though, um, luckily I think Samara and I, we both work for our real estate institutes. We're trying to do more about it. We're trying to lobby more about it. Um, and, and I will be honest though, guys, we have great owners. Our owners are fantastic. They will look after our tenants just like the tenants look after them. So our job is just to find that perfect match. Um, we, we can't help what's happening in the market, but I think something that Samara and I probably agree with is, is it's just that humility and care that you give the tenant. Trust me, they look after the property, the owner looks after them, and it's a perfect match. It's just trying to take that conflict out from people and where they're feeling. No, beautiful. And I think on that note, we'll, we'll leave it there. We're all trying to look for a win-win. We're trying to do well as investors, but we do that in the right and ethical way. And we deal with good ethical people like yourself, Jamie and Samara, and we get the win. It's about putting the great team together. So thank you very much uh, for all our audience tonight. I know it's uh, we've got a few minutes over, but you can see we could have gone on for hours talking about all the all the different things happening in the market and all the different people it affects. And um, But you've got a great team and I hope You've enjoyed the Property Pass uh, webinar this evening, educational webinar. As I say, I'll be reaching out in the next couple of days to see how we can help you if we need to connect you with any professionals or whatever. So thanks very much again and uh, you have a great evening. Cheers.